Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I want to do another video this evening talking about current events as it relates to Bible prophecy. And the subject of tonight's uh, video is never a fun subject to talk about. It's something that people don't like to think about for sure anywhere in the world, but uh, especially Americans. Americans just don't uh, understand uh, persecution and things are going on with Christians all around the world right now. Um, so I just feel led to do this video tonight. I'm going to cover a new story that I saw. Got a lot of scripture I want to go over. Um, but uh, this is just just a really, really important message. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, it's amazing because even the secular world knows that something is going on and that something big is about to happen and that things are going to change. Just watching TV, watching Fox News or CNN or whatever, you can sometimes see these TV commercials about uh, prepper food. You know, selling, uh, buying food to stock up for coming hard times and, and troubles. And, and what those troubles could be, who knows? It could be total financial collapse. It could be... A uh, natural disaster, like an asteroid hitting the Earth, or EMP attack knocking out the power grid, or uh, <clears throat> just a terrorist attack in general. Uh, who knows? There's, but there's, without a doubt, I think the most likely scenario in the short term is financial collapse. But even the secular media, e media, even the the secular world knows that something big is about to happen. <clears throat> but when you tell people that it, what the, what's about to happen relates to Bible prophecy and has been foretold in the scriptures, they laugh at you. They think you're crazy. Yet, people are preparing and prepping and have been for a number of years. <clears throat> Excuse me. And in fact, the Department of Homeland Security considers people who prep for troublous times ahead potential domestic terrorists, believe it or not. You're on the Department of Homeland Security's list of potential domestic terrorists if they know you're a prepper. Um, but here's the thing. The important thing is, the most important preparation to make is making sure that you are saved and that you know Jesus, that you are born again. All other ways will lead straight to hell. A radical Muslim terrorist who beheads people and the most peaceful Hindu who might do great humanitarian deeds are both going to end up in hell. If the radical Muslim terrorist truly repents and comes to Jesus with a broken and contrite heart recognizes that, you know what, I made a mistake. Muhammad's a lie. Jesus Christ is the truth. He's really the Son of God. If a Muslim murderer, terrorist, comes to Jesus Christ and repents, he will, he will be saved. He would go to heaven. And the peaceful Hindu would still go to hell if he never comes to accept Jesus Christ. All of our righteousness is as dirty rags with God. We cannot do a single thing to earn our salvation. Period. Jesus paid it all. All to Him we owe. We, you cannot go to heaven based on anything you do. You can be the most upright citizen. You can, you can you know, live by the law and not break the laws that be a great what you think is a great person, but the Bible says all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. We cannot lead the perfect life that Jesus led, and God's standard is perfection. Our righteousness comes from Jesus alone. So if you're prepping for the last days, and there's nothing wrong with being ready for for a catastrophe and making sure you have some food and water and things like that stored. Make sure as well that you are ready spiritually, that you have been born again, and you are ready for either death or for the return of our Lord and Savior, the soon coming King, Jesus Christ. 
I know that the message is not popular and seems too extreme that a perfectly peaceful Hindu person who's, who's sincere in his faith and tries to live the so you know, and supposedly tries to live a good life would go to hell and a murderer who repents would go to heaven. That's so contrary to our, our way of thinking as a human being. It's hard to grasp that, and it's hard for people to really understand that we can't do a single thing to merit our salvation. That, like I said, that message is not popular, and in today's world it's considered too extreme. But it's the truth. And as a Christian, I must stand for the truth, even when it isn't popular no matter what the cost. And we're hearing more and more about extremism because of the radical terrorism that's going on around the world and people being beheaded and the fear of what's going on in, in around the world with terrorist groups. Governments are coming out and talking more and more about religious extremism. The problem is Christianity and saying that Jesus is the only way will soon get you in prison. It will soon possibly even result in your death. So the question is, are you really ready to give up your life for Jesus Christ if necessary? Here in America, we tend to not even think that that's an option, that that's a possibility. Now it's happening all around the world and in the Middle East and in African, uh, North African Muslim nations and in China and North Korea and communist nations. Christians are being slaughtered like never before. But here in America we tend to think that that could never happen here. The fact of the matter is, it's not a matter of if, it's when. The Bible makes it clear in the last three and a half year period of time, once the mark of the beast is enforced by the Antichrist, that um, <clears throat> if you do not accept that mark, you will be beheaded. Revelation chapter 20 verse 4 talks about souls that, that were beheaded for their testimony of Jesus Christ. And we're seeing that happen all around the world now. And it's on its way to America. It's just a matter of how quickly it gets here. Those of you who watch my videos, and I'm not making this about the rapture tonight, but I do believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, but that does not mean that we could face death and persecution here in the United States prior to the final seven-year period of time. We don't know when for sure the covenant with many is going to be confirmed, and we don't know how bad it's going to get between now and then. There is judgment coming to America, and it's coming fast. And as we continue to turn our backs on Israel... This nation is going to suffer judgment. I don't know if ISIS is here yet. I don't know how, how quickly it's going to take for them to get here. I don't know how bad terrorism is going to get here in the United States. But there is definitely troubled times ahead. And us Christians here in the United States tend to be very, very uh, success-oriented. We think that God wants us to lead a happy, perfect life now, have our best life now. He wants us to prosper. The prosperity gospel, the lie of the prosperity gospel is very, very popular over here in the United States. That's why Joel Osteen has the largest church in America. The fact of the matter is, that was not, that's not a biblical gospel. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you need to pick up your cross daily and follow me and deny yourself. And that's not what's being told to the church here in America. And I fear that if per real true persecution actually does get here, that most people will fall away. We have to be prepared for whatever we might face. So that brings me to a, a story or two that I want to look at real quick. Um, <clears throat> this is out of the blaze uh, today, and uh, <clears throat> hang on a minute. First of all, I just want to read this little quick little headline because it talks about preppers, and then I want to get into a different news story. But it says, "Crazy Texas Prepper?" Question mark. 
Texas man gets fed up with FEMA misdirection and government lies and decides to help as many people as possible by releasing his 119 page sur survival guide for free. This is the exact guide he used to prepare his family and friends for the worst situations imaginable. Now, again, a lot of people who are not necessarily Christians or not people that believe we're living in the last days are also prepping for huge disasters that they think are coming. I am a Bible-believing Christian, and I can tell you the Word of God says for sure that there are major disasters coming. Like I said, it's not a matter of if, it's when, and by all indications, that when will be very, very soon. And I just pray that all of us will be willing to put Jesus first no matter what the cost. Uh, Matthew chapter 5, uh, <clears throat> verses 10 through 12 says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Let's look at a news story. This is a very interesting news story out of uh, the blaze. I've not seen it covered anywhere else. But the headline caught my eye, and it's funny because I was already planning on doing this video tonight talking about this stuff before I saw this headline. Uh, but this certainly confirmed it today after I was working on this video and I saw this email. It's confirmed to me that, yes, God wants me to talk about this tonight. Here's the headline. We are prepared to die here and now. It says, read what happened when an 80-year-old Christian said she refused to convert to Islam. We are prepared to die here and now. All right, it says, an 80-year-old Iraqi Christian woman who remained in her village after most inhabitants fled in Islamic State onslaught recounted the moment the jihadists threatened to kill her for her faith. The woman, identified as Victoria, said that she only realized the Islamic State group had taken over her town when she went to church one morning, as she does every day, but found it locked. Victoria, a Chaldean Catholic widow, shared her story with the Catholic Herald, which was covering a visit to Herbal in Iraq of the UK-based Catholic charity Aid to the Church in Need. Prayer sustained us, Victoria said, of the first four days after the Islamic, st as after the Islamic State takeover, when she and one of the other dozen Christians who stayed behind locked themselves in their home. When supplies ran low, the two neighbors... Both elderly Christian women went out in search of food. Inevitably, they ran into ISIS forces. Explaining their situation, they asked for help, and to their surprise, IS gave them water even after they refused a request to abandon their faith, the Catholic Herald reported. A short time later, the militants went searching for them in their homes and gathered them at St. Barbara's Shrine. You must convert, Victoria, recalled the men telling the dozen Christians left in town. Our faith can promise you paradise. Victoria and her neighbor Gazella said they would not convert. We believe if we show love and kindness, forgiveness and mercy, we can bring about the kingdom of God on earth as well as in heaven. Paradise is about love. If you want to kill us for our faith, then we are prepared to die here and now, Victoria replied to the militants. As she later told the Catholic Herald, Miraculously, the jihadists let the group, which included other elderly and ailing Christians, free. They are now sleeping on mattresses and temporary housing arranged by a church near the city of Erbil, the capital of the Kurdish region of northern Iraq. I'll uh, post this into the description box so you can uh, read it yourself and look at it if you want. There's a little bit more to it, but that's the gist of it. And the, so the question is, if that was you here in America, not in Iraq, but if you were here in America and you were pre presented with that exact situation, would you be able to stand up 
for your faith in Jesus Christ. And that's something that we all need to make sure we're ready to do and pray about and pray that the Holy Spirit will empower us with that boldness to face possible death. That's an amazing story right there, what happened when, when in, this, in this particular case where they stood up for their faith and did not die. I'm going to read about a couple other instances out of the Bible. I'm going to get into some scripture now um, that I've just again felt led to share. I'm going to read a few of my favorite passages of scripture in the Bible. Uh, great great uh, examples of people dis displaying their 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 unwavering faith in the in the face of severe persecution and possible death and staying faithful so let's look at uh, let's go to Daniel chapter 3 verses 10 and 12 10 through 12 this is the story about uh, King Nebuchadnezzar and he uh, built the golden image, the, the statue of himself, and required that everybody, when they hear the music, worship his image. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego decided not to do that. They, they, they would not abandon their faith and worship the false image. Let's look at uh, verses three, or excuse me, chapter three, verse ten through twelve, fourteen through eighteen, and twenty through twenty-five. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth down not, not down, and worship, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Nebuchadnezzar spoke and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, uh, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the coronet, flute, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, well, but if you worship not, you shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. And whom is it that God, and and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Let's go, skip down to verse 22. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent, and the, burning, burning, uh, and the, and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, and rose up in haste, and spake, and said unto the as counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of Man. How awesome a story is that? The fact that the thing is, that's not just a story. That's, that happened, guys. I did a video yesterday about all these amazing stories that seem impossible, that, didn't, that people don't believe happened, and they did happen. And the, and the Bible predicts things that are about to happen, and they're going to come true literally just as much. And we have to step out in faith and realize that God is in control. And he'll never leave us or forsake us, even in death. But in this case, their faithfulness was rewarded. And they have survived being thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. And I love the verse uh, 18. Let's look at uh, verse 17 and 18. Uh, 
Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the burning, firing, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image without which thou hast set up. In other words, they didn't, even if it meant they were going to die, that was okay. They were not going to give in and bow down to the false god. Let's look at another example in Daniel. Daniel chapter 6, verses 8 through 13. Uh, now, O king, establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before his God, as he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king, Concerning the king's decree, hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall seek that shall ask a petition of any god or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed but maketh his petition three times a day. <clears throat> and all right, So then, uh, let's, let's, see, let's skip down here. Then the king commanded, and, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And the stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went into his palace and passed the night fasting, neither were instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually, able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and hath shut the lions' mouths, that they have not hurt me, for as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Again, amazingly, the king said to Daniel, uh, let's see here. In verse 16, Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. The king knew that the, the, the God that Daniel served was powerful enough to deliver Daniel from the den of lions. And Daniel did not give in, and he was tossed into the den of lions to regardless of what the outcome may have been, but he was his faith was rewarded by God, and God protected him. Let's go to the New Testament real quick. Acts chapter 4. I'm going to have to read a lot in this, but uh, I think it's worth reading. Acts chapter 4. I'm going to read some of, verse, of chapter 4 and 5. Acts chapter 4, as, And as they spake unto the people, the priests, and the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in, in hold unto the next day, for it was now eventide. Howbeit many of them which had heard the word believed, and the number of men was about five thousand. And it came to pass on the morrow that their rulers and elders and scribes and Annas the high priest, and Caiaphas, and John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the kindred of the high priest, were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they, and when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power, or by what name, have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if, this day, if we this day be examined of the good deed done to the impotent men, by what means he is made whole? 
Be it known unto you all, and to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which is set at naught of you builders, which has become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. And beholding the man which was healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For that indeed a notable miracle hath been done by them, and manifest, is manifest to all them that dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But that it spread no further among the people, let us straightly threaten them that they speak henceforth to no man in this name. And they called them, and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered, and said unto him, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot, speak the, uh, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding, finding nothing that how they might punish them because of the people, for all men glorified God for that which was done. All right. So they again they said that uh, we cannot but speak of the things that we have heard, um, and they were told they cannot preach in that name anymore. So let's go to uh, Acts chapter five, verses twenty-five to twenty-nine. <clears throat> Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Now they were just told they can't preach in that name anymore. But now they're out there preaching again uh, and standing in the temple teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them violence and brought them without violence, for they feared the people lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council, and the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not straightly command you, you that you should not teach in this name? And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. And then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. Let's skip to verse 40. And to him they agreed, and when they had called the apostles and beaten them, when they had called the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. And they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Even in the temple daily, after they were beaten... For preaching Jesus in the temple, they continued to go on daily and faithfully preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Again, I know we live in America, and I know we have, we've had it very easy to this point. But things are about to change. And it is going to get really, really bad. And I know that doesn't sound like a popular message. But it is the truth. And the question is, will you be able to rejoice that you are accounted worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus Christ? That's a decision every one of us may be required to make. And I just pray that all of us will be strong enough in our faith that only comes through being born again and being a new creation, being made a new creation in Christ Jesus, who will change your heart and give you a total new, uh, totally new wants, needs, desires, everything. And when you're walking in the Spirit of the, of, the, of the Lord, this world means nothing to you, and you will boldly be ready to serve Him. Like the Christians that I can name right now, remember uh, Miriam Ibrahim, the Sudanese Christian woman who married an American. And when she was in prison, 
and was facing lashes and death by hanging for being a Christian. And she did not renounce her faith and was forced to give birth to a child while shackled to a bed in prison for her faith. She's been released and she's actually now living over here in the United States. Pastor Saeed Abedini in Iran, American pastor, being held in Iran. He's been beaten nearly to death. And then they withheld medical help for, for him. We need to keep the, him in our prayers. Kenneth Bay in North Korea, American Christian, being held in North Korea. And then there's Christians all over the Middle East and African communist nations. Christians all around the world facing persecution who need our prayers. But if you truly know Jesus Christ as your Savior, we have nothing to fear. Nothing at all. The Bible tells us not to fear man who can kill our body, but to only fear God who can destroy both your body and soul in hell. Like the Apostle Paul said, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's a sobering story to a lot of, uh, or message to a lot of people, but it's one that needs to get out there because it is the truth. And things are happening so fast right now. There's, with, without a doubt, if Jesus does not return uh, fairly soon, there's a really good chance that me, what I'm doing right here on YouTube, for example, preaching Jesus Christ, will not be allowed. They track everything that we do online. They know what we're doing, and the FEMA camps will open, and they will come get us. It's, if you try to mention Jesus at work or at school or whatever, it's going to be it's going to be considered a hate crime. It's going to be considered you're in too intolerant. You're trying to incite division. Jesus told us these days were going to come, and they are here. And, and and it's like I said, it's going to get worse. Praise God, though, we have a Savior who will never leave us and never forsake us, and He promised that the gates of hell would not prevail against His church. And all of the signs that Jesus told us to look for, signaling His return, are here. And He said to us, when you see these things begin to come to pass, Look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. And I want to remind you of another very, very important promise to the church that needs to be uh, reiterated right now, and that is Revelation chapter 3, verse 10, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Now again, that is the seven year period of time that known as Daniel's 70th week. But between now and when that covenant gets confirmed and that time period starts, the church will still be here up to that point. We don't know how bad it's going to get between now and then. Let's stay strong in the faith and trust in God and keep looking up. Time is short. Make sure you're ready. God bless everyone.